Welcome to Tourism Matters, an online TV program that explores the many aspects of tourism and how it affects our lives. Tourism is the totality of the phenomena and relationships arising from the interaction of tourists, business suppliers, hosts, government, and host communities in the process of attracting and hosting these tourists and other visitors to deliver a travel experience. It covers transportation, accommodation, dining establishments, retail shops, entertainment, attractions, and other hospitality services for individuals and groups traveling away from home. In this episode brought to you by the UP Asian Institute of Tourism and TVUP, we will examine the major trends that drive the growth of the tourism and hospitality sector and its impact to human development. The tourism and hospitality industry is very dynamic. It constantly adapts to the changing necessities, demands, and desires across human societies. Technological innovations from the third industrial revolution and the ongoing fourth industrial revolution has greatly transformed the tourist experience. People become more experienced in traveling and careful in their choice of destination, leading them to a search for new places and new tourist products. They also are more mobile since cross-border travel become much easier due to the liberalization of airlines, construction of new roads, and globalization. Tourists are taking shorter but more frequent holidays throughout the year. They travel more frequently, actively seeking out diverse activities and experiences from their trip, and are now more concerned of the impact of their activities on the natural environment. Hence, Innovations drive development in the tourism and hospitality sector. Through the perspectives of the following industry practitioners and professionals, we will explore these trends changing the tourism and hospitality sector. Let me welcome to today's uh, episode, Mr. Mike Hain from Century Travel Corporation and Eugene Sugian, our digital marketing consultant. Hello, Mike. Hello, Eugene. Hi, Marissa. Hi. Uh, can you tell us more about what you do and the, the length of experience that you have had in the tourism industry? Sure. Um, so my, my name is Mike Hain, and I work as a groups manager for corporate international travel. And um, I've been a travel agent since um, when I graduated from AIT back in 1994. So, so you've never changed tracks. You've been in the um, hospitality. I also worked for um, some time in a BPO, but mm -hmm. also as a travel agent. Okay, so it's been 21 years in the travel industry. Thereabouts, yeah. yes. Okay. How about you, Eugene? Um, hi, ma'am. My name is Eugene Sugian. I am a digital marketing consultant. I've been working for uh, digital marketing for the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. So way back in 2009, back when it was um, eBay and Sulit, there was no Facebook then, it was still Friendster. So I started as an online seller back in college. And from there, I was part of the incubation team of Lazada, Groupon, and Zalora. And then from there, um, right now, um, I'm teaching, train, uh, I'm training digital marketing professionals and also marketing and sales departments for different companies all over the Philippines. So with digital marketing right now, it's very exciting. It's a new, um, it's a new field that um, you know, we'd like to, all of us could like, explore. Mm -hmm. So now the topic that we are going to discuss is about trends in the tourism and hospitality industry. Um, the reason for Mike's presence here is uh, the travel agency sector has been one of the pioneer sectors in the travel industry. And digital marketing has been on the rise for uh, professionals in the tourism industry. So we would like to see how the trends have evolved, no? especially for the travel agency sector nowadays that you call digital marketing as your disruptor. Okay, so can we uh, hear a few words on how digital, how technology has actually affected both positively and negatively to, your, uh, to the travel agency sector? Um, when I started working in the, in the industry as a travel agent, uh, we would even manually issue airline tickets. When I say manually, we really write, write. write on the airline tickets. And uh, these are paper tickets that cannot be lost. Meaning, if the passenger loses a ticket... He has to buy again. Yes, correct. Um, so it was like that before. 
um, with technology, the, 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 the ticket actually evolved now to an electronic ticket, but still using the same concept. Um, so a lot of the old, um, a lot of the old practices were actually used with hand in hand with technology. So um, also during that time, there wasn't um, internet wasn't widely used. So in effect, we had to research flights using big books. Um, uh, the airline would issue IATA would issue uh, those big airline books, and we have to research using those. But now with uh, technology, everything is really accessible. Um, with a click of uh, the mouse. Yeah, and then I remember technology in the past, we didn't have e email, so Correct. Um, if you're looking for flight, it has to be telex or Right, and fax. also um, you cannot just, like uh, you cannot email the airline for questions, you have to call. call. Uh, even passengers, when they book, mm -hmm. they, have, they either have to call the office, go to the office and then pay, uh, or, um, you know, they, they 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 just have to go to the office physically. Yeah. So, but with technology now, everything they can do via Viber, via WhatsApp, uh, or email. Mm -hmm. So, and then even their payment can be done through banks. Yes. Uh, and then, um, you know, everything is quick. Mm -hmm. So, technology naman so did was it, able did, to help. Did it increase business because of the speed of course, by which yeah, the correct. transactions are That's made? That's right, exactly. Mm -hmm. As far as Eugene is concerned, now that uh, the traditional way of uh, how Mike has described it. How has it been influencing your position as a digital marketer? Um, as far as with the, with the traditional, what, we, what, we, what I can see with the traditional is that they're also evolving together with the, together with the digital marketing um, technologies we have. So Facebook started out back in 2008. It wasn't like that. It was basically just a social platform, but now it's basically an entire marketplace, a shopping mall, it could be anything. Yes. And Facebook is, also Google is, is becoming like that. Um, both are competitors. The traditional, um, we're, seeing, we're seeing more niche markets mm -hmm. for different uh, traditional businesses such as hotels. They're also innovating, resorts are also innovating, even the destinations level in the Philippines, in the provinces, they're also trying to um, they're also trying to learn what, uh, what, how they could, how they could um, maximize digital marketing. So, I've had uh, clients before and also students from all over, you know, from, from from Mindanao as far as Mindanao and small destination municipalities who attend trainings here in Manila, just so that they could learn or you know about marketing, digital marketing, how to use Facebook advertising, how to use Google AdWords, because these are not. Although it's available in the internet, they are still looking for someone who could guide them with that. And I think the traditional businesses, if they are able to also know, oh, well, basically to know the enemy, but it's actually not the enemy but an ally, if they are able to, they could maximize the potential of digital marketing. Mm. So you were saying that they have, they're able to niche, no? to create mar market segmentation. How is that possible? Um, with a... With the technology, with Facebook, we have now, um, we have actually, you could shop different um, analytical platforms in, 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 in the internet. We have Facebook analytics at the back end. If you're doing advertising, you could actually segment different markets by using data mm -hmm. from the users. So um, later, I think we could discuss more about all the issues regarding that, but there are also, again, we have challenges and issues regarding that because, again, you're breaching into the privacy of our users. So basically, we have NetBase, um, we, have, we have Facebook Analytics, Google Analytics. You could use all those data to actually get the behavior of people, their interests, mm -hmm. and how you could target them. So in terms of providing the service, it's faster, and in terms of um, service execution as well, no? Yes. Because you basically know what the customer needs. Okay. So how does it might affect or impact your the traditional way of offering the services? Given that uh, those are available, readily available in the digital realm. Um, for traditional travel agents, travel agents mm -hmm. like me and uh, working in a traditional travel agency. Um, in fact, we also use um, platforms such as Facebook and Instagram to market our products. However, 
there are still passengers who need to talk to somebody. Um, it, yes, it is easy for individual travelers to go online and book their, um, you know, their future trips. Um, but it's still different if you talk to a traditional, to somebody who's knowledgeable about, you know, the destination and the product. Um, there's a huge uh, data available in the market, and if you know, if a traveler does not have the time to you know research yes. and um, figure out how to sort yes the volume of data exactly, available yes. it will be difficult for the traveler so that's where the traditional travel agent would come in because, the friendly face exactly yeah. and or the voice or uh -huh. you know because um, and in fact uh, there are two major travel expos hap in the in Manila mm -hmm. in the Philippines so we have. Um, the Travel Tour Expo and the, and the Travel Madness Expo. And these are venues for um, customers to go and actually talk to travel agents um, to figure out what they can do. Mm -hmm. So, but still, in the back end, we still employ digital marketing to market, you know, during the rest of the year. Um, of course, if you don't do that, I mean, you know, you're losing also a chunk of the market. So you're actually saying you're, they're complementing your yes. kind of business. And if you don't actually try and do that, mm -hmm. I mean, you're going to get left behind. It, it, we have to admit that this is the future. Yes. Um, but even, even if it is the future, you still, you still have a place in the industry. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that you, know, you cannot employ the technology for your benefit. So, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Now, I'd like to uh, move further to some issues that maybe you both encounter in your, the day-to-day -day operations of your sectors. Uh, can you expound on some issues? As you mentioned earlier, now's the time for the issues. For the issues. Um, with, with, I think one of the biggest issues we're facing right now is about data privacy of the users. Like, the, the, the simplest way that these technologies, these platforms, the, the internet can get your information is by simply getting your email. And once they have their, your, your email, you have this you know, wealth of information that you could use for just one user. So um, this started back in 2015 when, when, when Facebook and Google was, was found out to be use, breaching on data privacy. And then we have this How issue that, from- that when you have your email? And then you, you get everybody else's email. Uh, yes, when when you when, when, when let's say when, when Google when you subscribe into a service for the internet, let's say Facebook, uh -huh. you you become a user, and then you have Google. They get this. You answer this data question. Mining. This question, data and then they, 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 yes, they, uh -huh. they mine the data. Okay. And from how there, is that resolved now? It's not resolved. It's actually an ongoing case, and I think it will continue to be like that. Um, because it's very it's very prone to abuse. We have we have well we have this we have this documentary about um, Cambridge Analytica who used it as for, for election and Facebook was a platform used for that. Also, the rise of fake news all over the internet. I think there should more there should be more policing on it, and um, the rise of you know um, yeah data theft as as well. So. Uh, those, those issues are very important because um, us as users, like me as a marketer, I, am, I question myself as well on my ethics. Yes. Am I going to use this data to, to, you know, to, to get the results that I want or should I do it the hard way? So it's basically like that. Thank you. How about you, yeah. Mike? But even us now, um, like what he said about data privacy, um, it's also a big issue with us. For, especially because um, this involves funds, mm -hmm. meaning you know, the, the clients give their credit card information to us. So even, even us, we're very serious about uh, data privacy. And in fact, um, recently it's been implemented that uh, with IATA because we, sometimes we have to use uh, the client's credit card as a mm -hmm. form of uh, payment. So um, right now, um, it, it, it is an ongoing um, issue, but which is they're trying to resolve anyway. So um, we're we're quite content with um, with the, the current scenario. Um, it's not like you know um, before where you know anybody can just 
anybody can just use the, the, the information, uh, especially when they enter the credit card yes. online. Um, so, so there's more uh, safeguards. Do you mean you're, there's more in place, safeguards in, in place for security and safety issues as well as the privacy of the customer? Okay. So it's evolving kasi pwede kang i-hack. Exactly. Right? So that's, those are issues that they, we need to contend with. How has it been evolving so far? Um, since we cannot avoid technology. Technology is here to stay. Innovations. So how, how is it evolving? How do you see the progress of the travel industry in the next three, four years? Because it's fast. Uh, Ten years ago, compared to now, it's been... Super, the, the, it skyrocketed. Travel uh, purchases online has skyrocketed. So how do you see it evolving in three, four years? I can only, um, I can only talk about what we're doing um, in our company. Um, we, because we're not a huge travel agency. We're a medium-sized travel agency. And um, however, we cater to corporate clients and to um, leisure and leisure travelers in general. Um, however, what we try to do is we offer, we, we try to look for destinations that we can offer um, our current clients and also something that we can market to people. Uh, we were able to pinpoint uh, our market segment. And uh, with that, you just really need to know where your strengths lie. Um, you cannot pop up everywhere. Yes. You know, it's difficult uh -huh. to do that. Um, we know our strengths and we know what we can sell. So we zero in on that. We create products based on that. Mm -hmm. And uh, even with our corporate clients, um, be because right now a lot of the corporate clients, they're, uh, they're very sensitive to cost. Mm -hmm. So whereas 10 years ago, they're willing to spend more money. Mm -hmm. Right now, it's really more of you know, what's cheap. Um, or Bro probably value for the money to stretch yes, of the course, peso. Yes, correct. Yes. Um, and also the 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 the, the outside costs it, they also increase. Mm -hmm. So it's not like before where you know um, everything they, they they can buy anything. Yes. So right now even like for example um, a, a dinner will have. Um, Open bar before mm -hmm. now it's not not so they're more like cost that. conscious Correct. now. So with that, we try to look for you know um, better deals for clients, which is they cannot do if they go online because they have to search it themselves. Don't you offer that kind of service where you can zero in on what Mike is saying, destinations that offer value for money? Um, or yeah, can it be done also? Yes, it can be done. Um, no, it can be done. It can be done. Like there are, <laughs> there are, there there are basically right now we have we have um, a number of marketing intelligence agencies who would guide companies to actually um, to sell data basically. Mm. So the information wow. is the information is there, uh -huh. but the experience is not. So experience plays a big factor. For example, you have a corporate client with, you know, 20 million budget. They, they will not... The computer cannot tell no. you. Okay. You need somebody to, you know, um, you need somebody to, to conceptualize mm -hmm. a program for you. You need somebody to, you know, put it all together and then deliver the results. Because also, especially for clients, for corporate clients who um, do... Cor corporate incentive trips. Mm -hmm. um, incentive trips, you cannot just leave it, leave it up to, you know, yeah. whoever's there. Yes. You need a special, special, you need somebody who specializes in that, mm -hmm. and which is what we do. So it's, it's really, you need to look for your niche in the market. Uh, you need to look for your strengths. Yes. So it's, it's like So that. you're exercising, concentrating your resources in the maximum uh, impact Correct. The, the niche that will give you the maximum yield. Yes, and also because we also participate in um, in trade shows abroad, mm -hmm. uh, where we also see the the trends in the industry. Meaning, a lot of them employ technology. For example, for uh, for somebody who's organizing a conference, yes. they employ technology for people to sign up, make it more easy for people to sign up. Mm -hmm. They have apps to do it. Yes. So unlike before, where they have to, you know, there's a long list mm -hmm. of things that they need to do. Now you just go to your phone to register for an event. It's like that. 
even us when we attend trade shows, it's, we also do uh, use, utilize uh, phone apps. That's, that's good to know. You're evolving and using technology you really have to, as your friend. Yeah. So the niche now is for travel agents, it's really the corporate, corporate travel for your specific experience. Correct. Right? And also, um, a lot of travelers now are looking for more experiential yes. travel. Um, that's the key word, experience, because they will forget. They will, they, there's, most likely they will forget a destination or a, a site, mm -hmm. a specific site, but they will always remember the experience. Yes. And, and this is where we feels. come in. They cannot, they cannot get that information from, a, a computer will not tell them, yes. this, is, this, is, this is what you'll experience. Somebody will have to explain and you know, make you picture, this is, this is what you will experience, this is how it is when you go to that mm -hmm. destination. So it's like that. So we... We have to find, you know, um, a, a, a better way to market the product to the mm, people. Yes. So that's more um, showing people where it's the experience and how it feels more than just the information that is available to anyone who knows how to search to go in online, the internet. Correct. Yes. Yeah. In in Louis uh, in Eugene's experience, what do you think is the how is it evolving and adapting to further development of the uh, innovation. Um, with with I actually agree with Sir Mike. Like I could I, I see that uh, right now when when this Facebook thing started, a mm -hmm. uh, Facebook advertising started. Uh, basically, everyone was scrambling to get into Facebook advertising to get into digital marketing. But now I I I, I can sense that there is a retroactive um, innovation wherein all these, especially in the hospitality and tourism sector, you have to go back to experiences. How do you use technology now that you have a wealth of data to actually create specialized experiences for special for, for for people? How do you customize experiences? Mm -hmm. So right now, when we say that you're selling a product or a service, you have, you don't have to see it as like that. Any product, whether a, you know whether a, a can or a a, a, a you know uh, how do you, a sardines uh -huh. or, or a bag or a, or a bag or or a shirt or you know, uh, to, to destinations, you could actually create an experience out of it. So what you should market now, what you should sell now, is actually the experience, not the thing itself, not the product itself. How is that possible in digital, in the digital world? In the digital world, well, uh, with the use of data, you, 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 get, you get to know the behavior of people. These are the certain, um, we have influencers. They follow these certain influencers. These are the kind of photos that they like, so based from those aggregate data these are the photos that are trending so we have those trending trending pictures we have these trending topics this is how we, we the, there's this uh, use of moment marketing using moments wow, that's of, new. Yes, moment, moment marketing, marketing using okay. moments of for example um, uh, you know the FIFA World Cup and then you you ride on it or traffic metro and then Manila where do you traffic. find it in stories you, in you find it in stories Hashtags. you find it in Instagram, in Instagram. I think that the latest is September one. When September one came in, everyone, you know, everyone, the mo the shopping the mall started, uh -huh. you know, using it. Uh, use, started playing the Christmas ca carol. Uh -huh. So it was trending in in the in tw on Twitter, on Facebook. Like September one na Pasko na. So September one is Christmas season. So those are certain moments that you need to capture. And actually, um, data, internet data can be used. By by the companies to use to, to give to, to give pleasure to the people to give experiences to the people. So um, it's not more about on technological evolution. Yes. It's more about experiential evolution. So it's the behavior it's you're the behavior. looking at the behavior of your online users. Yes, of the online users. Also, um, in terms of technology, I think the latest one that I was very uh, surprised to, to, to see was back in uh, last month, there, uh, ABS-CBN uh, launched their ABS-CBN TV Plus Go. Mm -hmm. It's a dongle with an antenna where you can just connect to your Android and you have really? TV. You have TV oh, while well, well, you're commuting yeah. Yeah. and it doesn't get any, and it doesn't, um, it doesn't use the, your, your data. So I think that's a, that's a really like, you know, uh, something, an innovation that you could really see and use, especially for our market. So 
it was, I think they based that project from the data that you know a lot of of, the, of, of our of the citizens here in Metro Manila basically are stuck in traffic and they don't want to use data to you know to, to, watch. to overuse the data so they make you, you have to put the TV into their into their cell phone and from there you know you get this innovation so I think that's how 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 it will progress for the next three years. Wonderful. You have information wherever you are. Wherever you right? are. And you can market on those, you know, on those devices as well. As far as we've discussed issues, now I'd like to go into what challenges do you see for your sectors for um, now that uh, travel is on the rise? But since we're into experience, we also see that our clients can be very demanding, right? So how do you see what, what challenges do you face in the in the future and now that you you think are noteworthy for our viewers to to know and to be aware of well for us because um like because the information is out there mm -hmm. so for example if they if they inquire about uh, a price of a product and then they say oh how come when, when we checked online it's like this oh yeah so but they don't realize they're that, more informed now right? for, exactly mm -hmm. but they don't realize that you know, even after you've sold them the product, there's still after-sales service that you need to do. Like, for example, if they encounter issues, if they encounter a problem, um, who will they go to? A lot of times, when they, a lot of our, some of our clients, when they buy something online, and then, for example, they encounter a problem uh -huh. later on, um, they go to us and say, "Can you help me? Can you help <laughs> me handle it?" Uh -huh. But what what can we do right i mean they they are existing clients but it, it really happens it, it happens out there mm -hmm. um recently there was this um, company that folded mm -hmm. and it was in the news that they were selling that, that they sold a lot of um packages mm -hmm. and they cannot deliver um so these things are challenges to us um legit travel agents yes. because then people will think oh you know um, are you legit? Are you not? Are you not? Mm -hmm. Right. So, um, so these are the challenges that we face on a daily basis. Um, then they just need to check uh, with, like, for example, the Department of Tourism if we're registered, um, and also just deal with companies that are, um, you know, that are registered uh, businesses with the local government. So, uh, because if if they don't, and then if there's a problem. You know, it will affect us. So, um, what other what other problems do we encounter? Um, a lot of times, um, when there's a complaint, um, you know, we have to we have to assist them if they're abroad. Mm -hmm. If they don't have a travel agent who assisted them, then what will they do? So they have to we, deal with it directly. Exactly. Right? So we we also sell like travel insurance mm -hmm. to make sure because sometimes when you travel, they you know you just go. But a travel a, a travel agent will tell you you have to get that you have to get travel insurance you have to protect yourself when you go, so these are things that you know they might not think of if they just do it by themselves. So, thank you, and that's quite enlightening to find that there's really after before sales and after sales service yes. is really provided by a travel because that's, agency. That's what we sell after all, right? We, ser we sell the service. We don't just sell a product because there are plenty of products. Yes. But what is the right product for you? So at least, you know, our regular clients, we know how they are. We know what they, will, what they like. Mm -hmm. And so when, when they say, oh, I want to do this, and then we just suggest, like, maybe that's not for you. Maybe it's better if you go this way, yes. this route. So, thank you. It's good about, that you know your market. Oh yeah, that's yeah. very important. Mm -hmm. uh, with with the challenges um, from my end on uh, marketing services, it's more on educating educating the clients um, because we when we for example when we propose videos, usually the client would just say we want a video that will be viral. That's it. That's a but goal. But it's hard to know if the it's hard video to know. will go viral, right? right? It's viral. So you have to present a case that, you know what, this, are, this will be the shots, this will be the concept, this will be the storyboard. When we present it to the client, the, 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 initial, the initial reaction is that, where is the product? 
So they're still stuck into thinking that you have to, they're still stuck in the traditional approach of doing advertising, wherein it's all about product, benefits of the product, advantages, et cetera. It's, it's too focused on the product. But right now, even in how we package, you know, how we package the advertising experience itself, the first contact, basically, of digital marketing, the first contact are the videos, the photos. We, you don't actually have to necessarily market the product. You have to market the experience behind what your product can do. Mm -hmm. So that's the, I think that's, the, that's the, the, the major challenge that um, it's basically on the mindset of the client and also, also for destination. So we have tourism officers from all over the Philippines that are, most of them are not actually, they don't have the background for marketing, marketing, you know, or marketing or sales. They have different background on planning, etc. So we have to educate them because these are, you know, these are clients and customers coming in from the provinces. We have to educate them that this is, uh, this is how marketing is being done these days. These are what makes, uh, you know, videos viral, what makes vi video, you know, add value. So the first thing that we have to realize is that your marketing material in itself is already part of the product. You cannot design it out from your product itself or use it just as a tool because you are actually being based or being judged by the market based on what you present already mm -hmm. that they're already buying that and they're although they're not paying money they're paying attention yeah. they're paying time to actually watch the video because when you open your facebook a lot of companies are competing for my attention so if how you do you scroll or, or exactly watch or Exactly. Stay on the page, right? Yes. So that's the main, uh, that's the main, 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 the main issue now is how do you break through the noise yeah. with all these people, including your friends who are also marketing themselves because everyone wants to be influenced, uh -huh. uh, to become an influencer these days. You are actually competing for attention for each other, not just from, for companies, but also from users themselves who are creating stories, much better stories than actually your product. So it's all about breaking through the noise. And in order to break through the noise, you have to know who you are talking to, you, who, who, how do you know, you know, who are, who is your market? How, what, what do you know about your market? So it's more about, you know, using technology to, 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 to create a, a database that you could actually give to people. You give, you give value on that. So I completely agree with Sir Mike that with, the, with the experience. Also, let, I'd like to add as well that I think for the, for the travel agency sector, for the tour operator tour sector, the main market would be the mass market, you know, big groups that are, you know. That's uh, why he's group market that's manager, why group you know. Market. <laughs> that's where the business is, right? Yeah, we have, we have China coming in, Correct. like, we have China coming yes, in. Who's, in buses you know, and droves. Yes. yes, in buses and droves, like 3,000 for what? 3,000 Chinese tourists, one, in one just tour one group. group. Wow, you amazing. Will, you will notice there are, some, <laughs> there are some travel agencies who actually employ digital marketing heavily. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, they would invite... To uh, break through the noise, as They would uh, invite would uh, actors and actresses mm -hmm. to travel. Um, influencers. Influencers. Yes. And they will post pictures, tag the travel agents. Uh -huh. And these are actually good and, and also bad sometimes. because Good because, you know, they attract more... They attract more um, possible passengers mm -hmm. or possible clients, um, but bad in a way because then people would just want to become influencers because th yeah. they're not all you know they're not all that, that right? They're not all legit as well, right? Yeah, so they're, they're not, just in it for the money. I and think. you you read <laughs> stories online of, for example, uh, somebody who would say that you know I'm an influencer, so therefore host me. Oh. Oh, so you get those kinds of offers well, now? Not me, but maybe properties, uh -huh. hotels, yes. uh, the like. So, mm. um, and then they will just say, no, "We don't do that. We don't. We yeah. don't. That's not our market." Because a lot of the influencers they actually attract the mass market. Mm -hmm. um, but you get also you, you also get you, you know, there's also the the, the the luxury market which you you can tap. Mm -hmm. So these are people who who are willing to spend serious money yes. for really good experiences uh -huh. and um, so that's also a decision that uh, business owners should make are you for the mass market then go truly full digital but you also have this luxury market that's a niche that's 
willing to pay much for because a that's, similar experience. That's actually our business model. Uh, we don't actually do mass, mass market. market. Um, we, we do get a lot of uh, luxury travelers uh, as well as corporate travelers. So um, because you, if, if everybody does mass market, it's difficult, you know, the, 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 it is a saturated market. There are a lot of travel agents who do that. Um, even us, when we participate in um, travel shows or in the tour expos, uh, which is the B2C um, business, mm -hmm. we were there to be, to be seen and maybe get one or two um, clients who are, who are actually good mm -hmm. luxury travelers. Um, that's why when you visit our booth, we don't have, we don't have all the promos posted. So it's um, a business decision that correct. most travel agencies make on really finding that specific You need to know what, you, what, you're, what you're willing to do. Uh -huh. Yes. So maybe uh, to conclude, it's been very interesting that we've seen um, there's a lot of information available now, more information than ever, but there's really... Uh, the tourism product is really an experience that we sell and that we're allies, right? The yes. digital world we're and the traditional enemies. world. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If, if you have uh, your last words to our audience who are mostly students of tourism, of the tra of travel industry, um, what do you have anything to say to our budding uh, travel agents and budding digital marketers out there? Um, I think I'd like to speak to the, to the students. Um, those who are actually studying already on tourism, the, what, when, you're, when you're studying tourism well, in, in college, study also how, how to use digital technology because I think the mar the, our industry, tourism and hospitality, it's actually one of the uh, early adapters of technology. We are actually first movers when it comes to technology. Also, study, study digital marketing on Facebook, on the side, because in the Philippines, we don't have those kinds of, you know, of, of schools yet or degrees yet available to the universities. But all of those, uh, what you could learn, like me, I personally just learn over the internet and then go through it. And then, you know, if, 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 if you choose to enroll in professional schools who are offering this for three months seminars, it's actually very expensive. But all of those things are actually can be learned still in, on the internet if you just know um, if if, if, you, if you're just very you know um, hardworking to you know to investigate where it is. So I would suggest you start with a Facebook Blueprint and um, Google AdWords. From there, the sky's the limit when it comes to digital marketing. So there are your tips for the future digital marketers out there. Now for a traditional travel agency, there's still so much potential yes, for, for students sure. of tourism, Correct. right? And even when I hire people now, uh, if we get applicants, I always put a premium on those who know how to do digital marketing mm -hmm. um, or designing um, flyers that we can use and market digitally. Yes. So it is important that you know your, you know your strengths as a person um, but you also need to learn other skills that you can use and apply uh, for the future because you don't know what, you know what the future brings. Yes. So the future is actually full of hope. Yes. And yes. Uh, there may be challenges, but we look forward to a booming travel and tourism industry. We are in the right place, right? Yeah. Yes. The world is yes. becoming small. It's because very of, accessible. Uh, the digital yes. world and because of travel, it really makes the world mm. Uh, small. Thank you, Eugene. Thank you very much, Mike. Thank and you thank you for all the experiences that you've shared with us. And uh, we look forward to future innovations and interactions. And um, in closing, we'd just like to say that in tourism, we really are selling an experience, whether it's face-to-face -face or digital. The information is available at our fingertips, but there's also a friendly face that we can hold on to or look up to so that we can um, experience a real travel that we can never forget. So with that, thank you very much and we hope you learned a lot today.